Okay, this is Mongolian Mindset, and today we're going to be doing an uh, analysis of Tom Brady. Um, personality database, uh, sworn enemy, has Tom Brady as an ENFP. Okay, uh, ENFPs have N-E-F-I-T-E-S-I, -E -E okay? Um, they got ENFP with 102 votes, um, ESCJ with 75 votes, and ESFP with 16. It's interesting. Okay, we're going to do our analysis and see if they are correct or not. Um, we highly uh, suggest you guys pick up Linda Band's material. Um, she has the best metrics on finding out your personality type and helping you find others. Um, and while you're at it, pick up Dario Nardi stuff, the neuroscience of personality, brain scans and all included in this book. Um, this is his last book that he just published not too long ago so get that one and might as well get uh, John Beebe's work as well eight function model comes from him so yeah let's go ahead and start this what is Tom Brady Alongside Tom in the ads the new uh, Hertz exclusive Shelby Mustangs the newest addition to Hertz EV rental fleet. We spoke to Tom yesterday, spent some time. We were allowed 10 minutes. We went a little bit longer, and I started with the question if you would have stuck with baseball, he was drafted by the Montreal Expos. If he had stuck with baseball instead of football, where would you be today? I'd be selling insurance. <laughs> baseball was not my. Okay, so um, we're, we're going to try to figure out very quickly. Um, what is Tom Brady? Is he direct language or is he informative? That helps us a lot because that eliminates eight other types. Okay, and that response there seemed pretty damn direct there. I'd be selling insurance. <laughs> I'd be selling insurance. That wasn't hard. Wasn't beating around the bush. That was straight, straight to the point. Baseball oh, was not my sport. Baseball was not my sport. I loved it. But I loved the TFI. I was much, it turned out to be obviously football was the one I chose for a reason. Uh, although I did love baseball. It was a I did love baseball, TFI again. Great sport growing up, <laughs> especially in California growing up. Barry Bonds went to my high school. He's name dropping Barry Bonds and who else? Uh, Greg Jeffries. Okay. Um, Greg Jeffries, he's name, he's name dropping TE. Um, TE name drop, so that's three points for TFI. It was a great baseball school, so that was my. First, first love, and then football, obviously. Once yeah, I first, first love, TFI some more. Started playing football, was game over. Okay, but what's the scouting report on and When I started playing football, was game over, outcome. So I'm going to put a point down for outcome. Tom Brady, baseball player. Uh, a lot of like football, you know, probably not that powerful, uh, you know, pretty smart game manager. Um, <laughs> <laughs> not very fast on the first baseline okay. probably best at catcher where he doesn't have to move that much but likes to direct other people around like to direct other people around Ooh. so um i think tom brady is direct okay <laughs> he even said it right there so um we're gonna put an extra side of it we'll come back to it um, but we think he's direct and he's giving us a lot of tfi so we're going to be eliminating a lot of types very quickly so i think Probably wouldn't be much different. I think you've come full circle from the picture at the combine to now you and your underwear selling Tom Brady underwear. It all worked out. That. Yeah, yeah. Somehow it worked out. I know a lot of a lot of time in the last twenty three years to get in a little bit better shape. So I was a college kid. I was coming out of college. Oh my god, that probably wasn't my finest moment. But I always joke about that picture, like. No one else has a picture like that. Where's Peyton Manning's picture? <laughs> I, he didn't look great in those in those gray shorts either. So, but I just somehow never see a picture of that. What would you pay to have that picture from the combine? <laughs> and you remove it from civilization. Uh, go back. I think that's a TE comparison right there. Compare himself to Tom Brady. <laughs> so, but I just somehow never see a picture of that. What would you pay to have the, uh, the, to get a little bit better shape? So, I was a Brady underwear. It all worked out. That? Yeah. Yeah. 
Somehow it worked key out. Key comparison to Peyton Manning. A lot of a lot of time in the last 23 years to get in a little bit better shape. So I was a college kid. I was coming out of college. Oh my God, that probably wasn't my finest moment. But I always joke about. Wasn't my proudest moment. This TFI, uh, and he did a T comparison with uh, Peyton Manning. So that's six points of TFI, and he's direct. So we're gonna go ahead and eliminate all of the informative types and personality database. You are already wrong because. Uh, to be an ENFP, Tom Brady would have to be informative. Okay? So that is already disqualified because he is not informative. He's one of the direct types. So that means he is one of the ENTJs, INTJs, ENFJ, INFJ, ISTJ, ESTJ, ISTP, and ESTP. Um, so we're going to go ahead and ESTJ, uh, ESTP, ENTJ. Um, and ENFJ and the reason why I'm writing it down is because we're gonna go ahead and eliminate all of the TI users because he's a T user ISTP um, INTJ and INFJ so we're gonna go ahead and eliminate the uh, TI users that means ENFJ INFJ ESTP ISTP so we're down to four types ESTJ ISTJ ENTJ INTJ for Tom Brady already and those both types are by fall, by default, systematic. So Tom Brady is automatically systematic. He's systematic in his thinking. Um, he's always going to try to implement like a, a system or structure to try to control what he can control in his life. He's not interest focused. Um, ENFPs are interest focused, by the way. So, yeah. <clears throat> so we're down to those four. And let's see what we can get. We need to either see if, is he, if he's affiliative or pragmatic. Um, affiliative is uh, doing what's right. Pragmatic is doing what works. Okay. Um, we need to see if he's outcome or progression. Um, does he care about the process of things or does he just care about the outcome? Um, what's another metric? Is he abstract or concrete? And we can use that to narrow things down. And does he have SE, NI, or SINE? Okay, those will help us. If he's SINE, he's an STJ. If he's an SENI, he's an NTJ. Picture like. No one else has a picture like that. Where's Peyton Manning's picture? <laughs> I, he didn't look great in those in those gray shorts either. So, but I just somehow never see a picture of that. What would you pay to have that picture from the combine, <laughs> and you remove it from civilization? Oh man, you know what? I wouldn't pay anything, uh, but I would just. Uh, it, it's it's a, it serves as a great reminder of where I've come from. So at this part. At this point, I would say it's. I'm pretty cool with it. It's. I look back and I think, God, I remember that day. I remember rooming with Mark Bolger in an Indianapolis hotel room and laughing, you know, about where we were at and couldn't imagine that we were both in this position we were in. That you know, Brady Bolger wasn't the greatest quarterback class. Chris Redman and Chad Pennington. So uh, we've come a long way since then. But Mark actually had a great career. Tim Rattay, um, a lot of these guys said just, I don't run into that much anymore. But cool, man, and Chad Pennington that an SI talking about where we were at and couldn't imagine that we were both in this position we were in. That, you know, Brady Bulger wasn't the greatest quarterback class. Chris Redman and Chad Pennington. So uh, we've come a long way since then. But Mark actually had a great career. Tim Rattay, um, a lot of these guys said just I don't run into that much anymore, but we had a good we had a I, great time. There. I love that you We're, remember all the quarterbacks that were taken ahead of you. I don't run into anymore and put that down for SI. No. <laughs> a few that were taken after too. T. Martin, Gio Carmazzi. I remember all them, but that that was really important to me at the time. I mean, it that was my whole life. I was. I remember all of them. He even gave even extra like extra names. But not doing that for SI. Memory seems to be very good. He even remember oh. extra names. <laughs> A few that were taken after too. T. 
T. Martin, Gio Carmazzi. I remember all them, but that that was really important to me at the time. That was very important was to me at the time, TFI. My whole life, I was, that was the beginning of the internet where they were doing mock drafts, you know, and you went on these, these sites and you saw, you know, where this person thought you were going to get drafted and where this person thought you were going to get drafted. So it was, it was a lot going into that, um, you know, that year. And uh, it seems like it went so fast. Literally, I blinked my eye. I'm like, here I am. I'm like, holy <laughs> where did the time go? And, you know, I can't believe that, you know, I played this long. It's hard to imagine. I know you're uh... He didn't give you much there. It's pretty much talking about the outcome there. Okay. He gave us much there. He's talking about the outcome. He didn't walk us through no progression or anything. Holy shit, I can't believe I played that long. Put a point for Prag there. Uh, representing Hertz, if I said you could have three teammates get in the rental yeah. car with you and you're going to yeah. start a new team, any yeah. three all time, who who's in the, oh, the back man. seat? Or maybe one's in the front guys seat I, with you. <laughs> guys I've played with or yeah. guys that i played against? I'll let you pick three guys uh, who's going to start a football I, team. I would say that's... Uh, there's more than three, so I, I think that there's a, there's reasons why all of them would be there, and not for the reasons that people may see. Um, and I, I don't think just three would be would be would be right. Okay, there would probably be. Okay, ten. so that's a affiliative statement. He's talking about what's right there. I'll put a point down for affiliative. Three would not be right. And um. Does Hertz have an I mean, SUV think, that we can put ten guys in? They must have a fifteen seater. Okay. You got to get like a fifteen seater, <laughs> okay. like the kind that my neighbors had when you know when they had nine kids next door and they had the the minivan or the large van. Um, Rodney Harrison was great. Um, Wes Welker was great. Randy Moss. Um, I mean, there's too many to name. Ty Law. Um, Kevin Falk, Julian Edelman, Gronk. I'm naming all the options. Yes, you guys noticed that too. <laughs> well, you got Ty and, and Rodney in there. So got Ty and Rodney. Um, I mean, they're all. Everyone's everyone's different for different reasons. I think about all our great teams. Everyone's different for different Everyone, reasons. I'm gonna put that down for S I N E. Everyone's different for different reasons. Okay. Some, some years our defense was a little bit better than our offense. So when I think about those years, it's like Richard Seymour. I mean, he was unbelievable. Or Vince Wilfork, um, Junior Seau, um, Asante Samuel. And then, you know, other years our offense was totally dynamic, like 07, when you're thinking about more Wes and Randy, Kevin Falk. And you so, know what? I'm going to put, I'm going to go back to that, and I'm going to put that as a field of as well, because it's inclusion. Everyone's different for different reasons. Um, include, sounds like inclusion there. So I'm going to put a point down. Or fill it as well on that SEN either. Sounds like he, that was a pretty inclusion. Everyone's different for different reasons. I think about all our okay, great so I think that that's a fill of statement. Great teams. Everyone. Some some years our defense and, was a little bit better. The reason why I'm saying that's a fill is because he's talking about inclusion. Um, you know, interdependent type thing. Um, he's not talking about what works. He's just saying everybody's different for different reasons. So um, that's like a collective. Our offense. So when I think about those years, it's like Richard Seymour. I mean, he was unbelievable. Or Vince Wilfork, um, Junior Seau, um, Asante Samuel. And then, you know, other years our offense was totally dynamic, like 07, when you're thinking about more Wes and Randy, Kevin Falk. So Matt Light, I and mean, everyone was so good. They were all great. I mean, for God's sakes, they're in the NFL. They're one of the greatest, you know, in the world. So They're one of the greatest you know, in the I world. They're in the NFL, for God's sakes. That's a feel of as well. And that's TFI. For God's sakes, during the NFL. Here's our offense was totally dynamic, like 07, when you're thinking about more Wes and Randy, Kevin Falk. So, Matt Light, I mean, everyone was so good. They were all great. I mean, for God's sakes, they're in the NFL. They're one of the greatest, you know, in the world. So, you know, I almost said. Pretty tough to choose. I almost said this to you on the pretty podium when you guys beat Seattle. And it probably wasn't going to be fair to you, but I almost said to you, 
do you think you should give the keys to Malcolm Butler? Yeah. To that, sure. that truck. When did you decide that for you sure. were going to do that? You know, I, I will say that that was one of the greatest defensive plays in the history of the NFL. That was one of the greatest uh, defensive plays in the history of the NFL. <sighs> TFI. Malcolm Butler had that ability to make that play. There are very, very few cornerbacks in the NFL that have the twitchiness and the reaction to get to that football. And as much as people will say, oh, you should have handled the ball off, we put a defense in that day that didn't allow you to hand the ball off. Um, you know, they, you know, there's kind of a, a, we a clip put a on defense our side. in that didn't allow you to uh, hand the ball off. I guess it's outcome. Talking about the outcome, we didn't. I need to hand the ball off. Um, you know, they, you know, there's kind of a, a clip on our sideline where they call like goal line three corners. Malcolm ran in. We forced them to throw the ball, and you know we they could have given. Forced them to throw the ball. I'm gonna put S E down. S E N I. We forced them to throw the ball. What it's talking about? What others are doing? To Marshawn, obviously, I would say that. You know, the coverage was an all-out blitz, and the ball had to come out quick, and Malcolm made the play. So I do think that was one of the great plays in NFL history. Right, that come Malcolm, out quick, and Malcolm you know, for made the great, play. Malcolm made the play. For, I would say, as much reaction to, oh, they should have handed the ball off, I wish there was the same reaction that was, can you believe how incredible of a play that was that Malcolm made? In fact, that's why I gave Malcolm the car, because Malcolm deserved the car. Malcolm deserved the car. That's the right thing to do. I'm going to put another point down for affiliative. He gave him the car. Um, it's the right thing to do. And, uh, you know, I think he still got it. How involved were you with the, uh, the concept of these commercials with Hertz? Pretty involved, you know. I, I uh, you know, absolutely saw them from kind of inception. They were a lot of fun, you know. I think that part of them were just trying to show – we're also, you know, deadly serious with everything we talk about these days, you know, trying to have fun with different things. I mean, we all could laugh a little bit more. So I love the fact that even with social media, at least how, what I try to do is just lighten people's mood a little bit, have a little fun with the day, you know, not take things too seriously. And I think these Hertz ads all reflect kind of a little bit of that. So uh, I've had two production days with them. We got another one coming up, but they've been really fun to work with. Um, you know the the group of the leadership group at Hertz has done a great job. It's a, it's really a great brand, and they're doing great things. Great brand, uh, great things. TFI, we are no TFI. Business and transitioning most of their fleet to um, EVs, electric vehicles. With I think they had put in the largest Tesla order uh, in the world, or they something. Put so in the largest Tesla of, order in the world. TFI. What they are doing, I'll we'll put an S E N I point down for that. It's talking about what others are doing. Elon getting to a trillion dollar wealth or something <laughs> is going to be this this hurts order. So good for him. Elon going to get to a trillion dollar. Give me the day, the moment when you say to Giselle, mm. "I'm going back." Uh, you know, we had quite a bit of time together. Um, I think mostly when I kind of told the team, look, like, you know, you guys got to make plans without me, you know, and then, you know, Jason and Bruce said, just give it time, you know, and I said, look, I, I, I feel pretty strongly, you know, and I feel pretty strongly to you, if uh, y'all got to make plans without me, outcome, I think we're closing in here, uh, we got four points for filler, to four points for outcome, three points for S-I-N-E, we got two points for S-E-N-I, um, and he seems primarily concrete. He hasn't really said anything really abstract here. So I think uh, I'm going to go ahead and close off ENTJ and INTJ um, because we're practically, a f we, we've already got four points for affiliative. And uh, um, yeah, we, we, we already got four points for affiliative. And we got seven points for SINE. Uh, I think it's looking like Tom Brady's at ESTJ because he sends so many outcome statements and he's he's talking about outcomes and he's not talking about the progression to things or generally like talking about the process of things. Uh, so um, it's looking like Tom Brady's at ESTJ. 
Um, we just need like one more uh, outcome and affiliative statement, and that will be that. It's kind of funny. Um, you see that critic coming up because you see that SE critic coming out. Like the critic, people don't realize is a pretty strong function. It's in the six spot, and it will show its head. It's it's arguably as strong as the uh, second function sometimes. So sometimes it can be even stronger. Kind of told the team, look, like you know, you guys got to make plans without me. You know, and then I think. Him telling the team you gotta make plans without me, that that's an outcome and that's an affiliative statement. That's the right thing to do. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and go ahead and close off ENTJ and INTJ. We're down to ESTJ and we're waiting. We just need to know if he's initiating or is the outcome focused. If he's initiating the outcome, he's ESTJ. If he's pro uh, process progression or responding, he will be an ISTJ. But he's saying a lot of outcome. You know, Jason and Bruce said, just give it time, you know. And I said, look, I, I, I feel pretty strongly, you know. And, and then, you know, time went by, and then you just get super competitive, you know. And I think I'm part crazy. I mean, I think that's the reality. I mean, <laughs> 45 years old, and I'm out here with a lot of young guys that are trying to take my head off. And I see Aaron Donald work out on my Instagram. I'm like, damn, maybe I should have retired. <laughs> I see Aaron Donald work out. That's an SC statement what others are doing you know <laughs> because he's a beast um but you know i had the appetite to compete and uh it's going to be gone soon i mean there's no doubt about it and i gotta you know just really appreciate what the time i have left because it's not a lot but i wonder the transition and and you know drew Brees went through this like you get done and then he went into the studio and and that's too abrupt like that's that that's that's a different reality you're going from playing to preparing for a game in a different way while you're at the site yeah. you're going to feel that energy i mean that's as close as you're going to get to playing yeah. again it feels like or it, i don't know if that factored in with you wanting to be game site as opposed to studio yeah and i think that's what i because i'm most familiar with that um uh, just based on the fact that i've look i've been in every production meeting for 22 years you know since the, when i started playing in 2001 um i know what those guys are asking i know what they're asked to do um and i think it feels very much like a team that goes on the road to prepare for a game so there's a lot of learning curve i mean obviously it's a it'll be a totally new career um it's a new opportunity for me to try something that i'm going to work really hard to prepare to be as as good as i possibly can be knowing that the day that I walk on the set for the first time won't be my finest moment. There'll be, you know, a lot of growing pains and I'll have to learn to be really good at it. But I also think there's part of it that excites me is I get to travel and be around football and be around people that, um, he likes to be familiar. You know, so I'm gonna go put a point down for S S I N E. Um, S I N E likes to be comfortable. Um, he said it will be familiar for him. So it makes him look comfortable. He likes to feel comfortable. He wants to be around football. Make him even more comfortable because that's all he's been doing. A lot of learning curve. I mean, obviously, it's a it'll be a totally new career. Um, it's a new opportunity for me to try something that I'm going to work really hard to prepare to be as as good as I possibly can be. Knowing that the day that I walk on the set for the first time won't be my finest moment. It'll be. And if you notice, you know, he's I'll, talking about the outcome here. He's talking about the end product. So that's enough points for ESTJ. He's talking about the end product. He's not talking about the progression to it. He's talking about literally the end product. Like, yeah, I'm going to be doing this. Go back. 2001. Um, I know what those guys are asking. I know what they're asked to do. Um, and I think it feels very much like a team that goes on the road to prepare for a game. So there's a lot of learning curve. I mean, obviously, a it's a T comparison. It'll be a totally new career. Um, it's a new opportunity for me to try something that I'm going to work really hard to prepare to be as, as good as I possibly can does, be. Knowing does, that, does it seem like he's talking about the process here? No, he's talking about the outcome, um, what he's going to do at the football. He's going to be a host, a uh, sports center host, I, I guess. The day that I walk on the set for the first time won't be my finest moment. There'll be. See, he's not know, even I'll, looking at that, that the how to. He's just, <laughs> I'm going to do this outcome. A lot of growing pains, and I'll have to learn to be really good at it. But I also think there's part of it that excites me is I get to travel 
and be around football and be around people that, um, you know, I've, I've been around great mentors in my football career, you know, being blessed to get drafted by the Patriots. I was around one of the great owners in the history of the NFL. I'm Mr. Great Kraft, on one of the great, come on. You seen the greatest head coach in NFL history. The greatest and, head coach uh, in NFL history. Another title, TFI. You know, and Coach Belichick, Josh McDaniels, Charlie Weiss, Romeo Cornell. I mean, the list goes on with the coaches that have been around, general managers, Jason Light, Scott Pioli. I get to be around players. You know, I had the best players. You know, I was around best defensive players, offensive players. Um, you know, I've been covered by, by John Madden. You know, I've been at Super Bowl media days. I just... I've had so much experience, and if I can help people along the way, you know, uh, by my travels and by talking to coaches and talking to players, you know, uh, I, I love the sport of, of football. If and, I can help other people, um, he actually did say some F.E. there. Oh, Tom, F.E. If I can help other people. I feel it, though. It's the right thing to do. I've... um. You know, I get to be in it. So I think that's what mostly I got excited about. And I think part of retiring for a very brief period of time was I got to explore a lot of other opportunities. Um, I got to explore a lot of other came... opportunities, S-I-N-E. Exploring opportunities. That's what N-E is all about, is exploring opportunities. Um, well, exploring ideas. So opportunities. I'm up, that, and this... My little N-E child got to explore... Uh, other opportunities so that makes him happy that's his relief really function the third spot and this is the one that i really excited me the most so um you know it, in the end although it was kind of abrupt it ended up being very i'm happy i went through it how long in would it the take end, you to find outcome in the end outcome find a super bowl ring in the house it's in my, uh i just need a key to my safe and i'm got i got it that's so, it so uh I know, I know where they're at. Although they don't come out very often, but I do know where they're at. Never hey. too far away. Hey, congrats. Good to talk to you. Thanks for uh, sharing some time. Thanks, Dan. Take care, pal. Have a great summer. Okay, so we're done with Tom Brady here. Um, Tom Brady is, what we notice immediately is that Tom Brady is direct, and that eliminated eight types, and then he's a TEFI user. He always puts TE or FI titles on things. Uh, achievements, whatever. He's outcome focused. He's his uh he's looking at the end product. He's not looking at the journey to do that. He's always talking about the end product of things. Um, he's very affiliative, so he's gonna do the right thing. Um, he's gonna do the right thing. Affiliate people talk about inclusion. Uh, they like when roles are given. Um, stuff like that. Uh, pragmatic people tend to be rebellious. Um, <clears throat> contrarians. Uh, tend to do things and then ask for forgiveness as an affiliate people ask before they do something um so yeah uh he's concrete i didn't get any abstractions at all from him really um i don't think i got any okay um and he's a s-i-n-e user um, and he did throw some points off of s-e and i but that's because s-e is in a critic spot so um tom brady is a estj um, personality database has an ENFP and the reasons he's not ENFP is the ENFPs are abstract and you will see that they are very abstract because they have NE in the hero spot <clears throat> they are interest focused okay so the people interest um, they're affiliative so Tom Brady is affiliative but he, he's not ENFP um, they are a TFI user he is a TFI user um, he is a SINE user just like an ENFP uh, but he is not informative language, okay? Um, Tom Brady is direct and to the point. And also, ENFPs are progression. So, uh, progression slash process, that's what their aim is. Um, and Tom Brady's outcome. So, with him being direct, outcome already automatically makes him a in-charge type or structure type. And then TFI being affiliative, concrete, S-I-N-E makes him an ESTJ. And we're going to go look at uh, personality database real quick. They have him as an ENFP with N-E-F-I-T-E-S-I. For the first time, they actually have the functions in general right, but in the, the wrong order. Um, he's an ESTJ, so it would be T-E in the first spot. 
S I in auxiliary spot, N E in a tertiary spot, and uh, finally with F I in the last spot. Okay, um, and uh, if you want a celebrity type, uh, please comment below, and we'll make our way through it. Um, this is Mongolian mindset, and we had fun with this one. And um, you guys have a great day. Like, comment, subscribe.